There's a great bit in Hot Fuzz where Danny shows how he uses his notebook. He he uses it for a little cartoon stick figure and you know he flicks all the pages to to show the movement. And it's really funny and it's very good. And he uh, says, I'll show you the other side if you like. Um, unfortunately, in the movie, we never see the other side. But fortunately for me, I bought the DVD extras and I could see the, the other side uh, in the DVD extras. And it was great. It was hilarious. Um, but it gets me thinking, they didn't need to. If, uh, you know, it was, it was surplus to requirements to to make the other side and put it in the DVD extra. You know, movies today, they don't need DVD extras at all. If the minimum requirement is 90 minutes and a three act structure, you can just stick to the script. There's there's no need to do it. And yet there are people, there are filmmakers out there who go for three hour movies or who have such serious, unbelievable attention to detail that is overwhelming and it looks amazing, right? And I think they do that because they have the user experience on their mind. They want to work hard to give the best audience audience experience as possible. For example, take Pottermore. Pottermore, uh, for those of you who don't know, is a website that hosts a ton of articles um, that J.K. Rowling, um, information about the Harry Potter world, uh, that was surplus to requirements for the story, um, but she she still just her imagination took her places and she sorted it out and she she wrote the backstory to Minerva McGonagall and she she knew uh, how the Hogwarts Express was made and so all that. Um, now she very easily could have compiled all that into a book and sold it, uh, and it would have been a, probably a bestseller. Um, but no, she didn't. She gave it away. She gave it away for free. Um, and so anyone who, who loves Harry Potter can can find out more about their favourite fantasy world on Pottermore. They can learn all about Nervin McGonagall, Sorting Hat, Rugby, Quidditch, uh, their relationship, um, or lack of relationship. And it's great. Uh, there, there's, a, there's a generosity there. Another example of, of generosity in art is The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight is just chock-a-block with fantastic quotes and um, the amount of social media <laughs> memes that that movie spawned is ridiculous and um, you know quotes such as some men just want to watch the world some men just want to watch the world burn why so serious the night is darkest before the dawn uh, he's not the hero that Gotham needs but the hero Gotham deserves um, you know fantastic quotes and you know if you were a bare minimum creator you might say to Christopher Nolan, you know, you're making a trilogy here, and this is only the second film. Let, let, let's let's hold back on some of these amazing lines. Let's let's save some for the third movie. But that would be counterproductive. Christopher Nolan's not about that. Christopher Nolan's about doing the best job possible for the movie. And he did that. Now back to literature. Uh, in some copies of the Lord of the Rings, certainly the one I found, uh, there is. A genealogy for each uh, hobbit, for each hobbit character. You can see how Bilbo and Frodo are related. You can see how many kids Samwise goes on to have. You can see the, the bloodline of Merry and Peregrine, Took, and all sorts of them. You know, um, doesn't add to the story, but still cool to see. Another thing to ponder is Banksy and his art. How much do you think Banksy charges for his street art? Uh, another aspect is the end credits of movies. You know, the movie's over, the story's been told. All you have to do, bare minimum, uh, black background, white list the, the crew and the cast, and that's it. That's all you have to do. And that's all the audience expects. And yet some creators use this opportunity as, a, as another chance to delight the audience. You know, take, for example, 22 Jump Street, you know, running through all the different, like, fictional... Um, sequels that are to come um, you, you, Tropic Thunder where we have Tom Cruise in a fat suit giving it his all you know and it's amazing <laughs> um, or Toy Story 2 uh, where uh, they show off bloopers and like it's an animated movie so there shouldn't be bloopers because you have to actually deliberately create it 
So those weren't mistakes. Those were actually made with the intention of being bloopers at the end of the movie. You know, it was actually made with intention to delight the audience when the movie's over. So so the point I'm, I'm trying to get at um, that stems from all these different uh, kind of stories and, and creations I'm pulling from is that I think your art and how it resonates with your audience could be improved if it comes from a place of generosity that you know this isn't this isn't a kind of a, a minimum wage job or a factory job where or a factory work where all you have to do is the bare minimum um, art is, is quite different um, that if it comes from a place of generosity if you look to if you look to be selfless and you're thinking of the other person and you're looking to work hard um, to satisfy them, to give them a great experience. Um, if your art, in short, to cut the rambling, <laughs> if it comes from a place of generosity, I think it's going to help the resonance of your art. I hope this helps.